two uninhabited Pacific islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. For six weeks, they'll be utterly alone, with only the clothes they stand up in and a handful of basic tools, filming everything themselves. When pushed to the limits of human endurance, Six! will it be brute power Three. or mental strength that wins the day? That's the hardest thing I've ever done. Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the women's island. This time, it'll be harder than ever. They'll have to hunt for food. You're all right, you are. Find water and build shelter. Oh. Living on the island in the middle of tropical storm season. It's like a tornado. That is terrifying. We need a radio with medic now. When pitted against the extremes of nature, and these Monday women got what it takes to survive. Guys, <gasps> that is a big <laughs> Four days ago, 14 British women were cast away on this remote, uninhabited Pacific island. <laughs> what a snake! Already, one woman has left the island. I need to go. Looks like you don't want to be here. Off. Who's up for this? Some of the group stayed behind at the makeshift camp, whilst an expedition party went in search of a permanent base with a sustainable water source. It's not salty. Yay! <laughs> but with no idea how to get back to the others, I've ripped my trousers even more. They are now lost in the thick of the jungle. Hello! And are completely out of water. We have nothing to drink. We don't know where we are. The women left behind have just rainwater to drink. Their fire has gone out and panic is setting in. Julie, you just order me about all the time. With both groups now starving and critically dehydrated, their time on the island could be over before it's really begun. It's day four. The five women left in camp have been waiting for over 24 hours for the others to return from their expedition. I feel dreadful. Honestly, I feel absolutely dreadful. I never thought I would be so desperate for food and water. We all want to get out of this camp, but we know the other group are coming back for us. We can't set off because we'll lose them. The women are trying to relight their fire to purify water from a muddy puddle, but their wood is damp. Um, that's it. It's moving. And, oh. oh, every time. What the hell are we doing? It's actually just another Groundhog Day of the same shit. It's like the best camping ever, isn't it? The best camping ever. <laughs> Mind you, I've only ever been camping twice. I didn't like it. However bad your situation is, you have to dig deep and find that inner strength to stand any chance of surviving. You know, simple principles that really make a big difference. And one of those is positivity, positivity, positivity. I might as well, honestly, I, I, might, I might as well have gone and sat in my horse's field for five days and not eaten, but just sat in the muddiest part of the horse's field. But the difference is I might have had a horse for company. I don't actually mind because I love extremes of weather. I like roar and wind and lightning and torrential rain and... Oh, lovely. I'm pleased for you. <laughs> Seriously, I'm really chuffed <laughs> for you. I've always wanted an adventure. And I think, God, I haven't done that much for myself over the last 55 years. Should have done more. Should have seen more. I get really wound up over the most stupid things. It's like, you know, when you buy expensive toilet roll and then you and you tear it and it doesn't tear along the perforations. That really winds me up. 
I, I try to stop myself talking a lot. But I do like to think that other people can get away in edgeways, you know what I mean? This is day four now without any food, so we're really going to feel it today. Earlier, the women found some yucca, a type of potato. Mother of two, Julie, has decided to peel it, despite not having a fire to cook it on. Oh, now, do you know what? I've just wasted that now. But we could have boiled it in soup, that's what Beth was saying. I would please leave you. If she goes on about those potatoes anymore, I'm going to stab her. After 24 hours without a drink, the expedition party are dehydrated, hopelessly lost, and wandering directionless. Walking is painful now. Physically, I'm I just hope we can find a drink. Oh. I can't remember the time I felt this thirsty. Careful here, guys. It's really slippy. Oh, shit. Hey. You're right. Super slippery. It's really slippy. Oh, God. Oh, hey. Who was that? That was me. Oh, my God, there's a caiman. <gasps> that is a big Oh, yes, I can see it. Straight ahead. Oh, shit. Oh, my oh. God, that's it. Yeah, it's enormous. It's watching us, though. We actually, well, I was just kidding. I, I literally yeah, must have walked past his nose by that much. Didn't spot him. Do we throw things at his head? No. No. Though potentially deadly to humans, a crocodile of this size could provide tens of thousands of calories for the women, who have barely eaten in days. Billy big balls, that. That is a serious Billy big balls. I'm not going for that one for dinner, then. Yeah. Not tonight, not without a fire. We wouldn't want to tackle that. No, as we don't have a sharp knife on us. We'll be back for you, man. Sleep with one eye open. With hunger and dehydration sapping their energy and with hunting equipment left at camp, the women decide to walk away from this potentially life-saving feast. Right, let's get out of here. Yeah, <laughs> it's nothing easy on this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's all right, it's all right. It's all right. That's, that's, it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Well done. As we know, Cayman can take off a leg, an arm, drag you into the water, one, drown you, one, eat you. Not great, yeah. really. So we all want to be out of here as fast as possible. And as an exit operation, we're doing quite well. Oh, don't you do that! <laughs> yeah. Too late! Too late, baby! Too late! It's too late. Too late. It's too late. <laughs> For these women to succeed, they've got to have faith. They've got to persevere and reunite, because there's power in numbers. My mantra is leave no man behind. It's that sort of attitude that's going to make the critical difference for them. I've got a beach on my left. Let's get on there, let's get an orientation. The women have been trekking through the jungle for two hours, but instead of finding camp, they've stumbled upon another beach on the north of the island. This, this is so hard. No one knows what the right decision is. <sighs> so thirsty. I've never been so dehydrated in all my life. I'm thinking about drinking seawater. <laughs> I know you can, but I'm not there. Uh... The women scavenge the area and strike lucky. We found coconut. Oh, my God! <laughs> It's just enough to keep them going. Come on, let's go, let's go. Let's do it. As they head back into the jungle to try and find the others once more. At camp, the damp conditions are proving problematic. I really, I was trying to start another fire. It's fine in the dry stuff. There's no sun. We can't see the sky. Oh, God, I... look at your little hands. My hands, I'm like, like, look. It's just from the wetness. They're going to crack. And they just, I, I'm in agony. I've achieved everything I wanted to in my profession. I'm really happy with where I've got to, but I think my job is starting to define me, and I don't want that. I want to find out who I am again. I think I have a need for adventure. I just feel so driven to do something completely different. 
crazy. I can't let it get in my head. You can't let it get in your head. No. It's important to be positive. Right. It will work out. Yeah. It will. We're about to work out how to make a great shelter today. Unable to make fire without dry wood, a shelter will protect the women from the elements while they wait for the others to come back for them. Push it down. Push that down. No, this. no, this, the top one. Push that down. I'll tell you what, there really is strength in numbers. You really feel that there's so much more work and so much more pressure on you when there's just a small amount of you. Oh, shit, that was it. There we go. Now, with just five of us, it feels pretty lonely, actually. Half an hour later, and the shape of a shelter is almost complete. It looks pretty good. <gasps> oh, fuck's sake. Positivity, positivity, positivity. The expedition party left what they've nicknamed Coconut Beach nearly two hours ago. And they are trekking into the thick of the jungle, trying to find camp. No, we're going back on ourselves. We need to go that way. There's the other coast feet. With the afternoon temperature rising to over 30 degrees... I'm so thirsty. ..the need for water is more critical than ever. My biggest motivation is to get to the others. Convinced they're close to camp, Georgie and Lauren go ahead to recce their surroundings. We're just looking. Go back to where we are. No fucking way. Can't be. We are? No, we can't be. We haven't done one massive... Yeah. Really? The expedition party have spent all day in the searing heat, only to find they've walked in one big circle back to Coconut Beach. Guys, do you want to come down? OK. Without a GPS or visual landmarks to guide us, human beings are naturally prone to walk in circles, even when we're convinced we're going in a straight line. Put dehydration into the mix, which slows down brain function, and the women find themselves in crisis. OK, so there's some bad, bad news. It's back where we were. Yeah. If the women don't find a proper water source soon, their time on the island will end. Bad news is we fucked up and we've just done a massive circle and we've wasted a load of energy for nothing. How the fuck did that happen? All too easily. We're in the jungle. We've got no we have reference no points point. of reference. And we're tired and dehydrated. I vote. We, we bed in for the night. I think I'm going to cry, George. I think I'm going to cry, with you? This is absolutely fucking ludicrous. Ludicrous. Physically, I don't know. People have got holes in the feet that are turning I have now. green. We can't sustain this. Oh, my God, what are they going to do back at the camp? Four days ago, I abandoned a group of ordinary British women on a remote, uninhabited Pacific island. After separating over 24 hours ago, the expedition party are desperately trying to get back to camp. But disorientated by the jungle, they remain in the north of the island. The women left waiting at camp have no fire to purify water and are also worryingly dehydrated. Mum of two, Julie, has been down at the rocks washing the women's muddy underwear. There's only uh, five of us here at the moment. The other group have got lost. We've no idea where they are. A couple of our group are just moaning all the time. I mean, for God's sake, it's supposed to be survival. It's not supposed to be a holiday. You know what I mean? We knew it was going to be tough. Facing a second night isolated from the others, the claustrophobic jungle environment is testing the women's mental strength. But it's been very difficult to stay positive. I don't feel we've got anything to look forward to. I just feel like we've been dumped. Can I say something positive? No, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> I don't feel too bad, you know. And I just think it can only get better. 
to be fair, Julie, you really haven't gone on any expeditions to get anything. You kind of conserve the energy by staying in camp the most of the time. You That's are good at talking the talk, let's do this, let's do that, but actually actively doing it is a different story. Maybe that's why you're think... feeling so good. I, I appreciate everybody is really fucking pissed off. All I said was a bit of positivity. I've spent fucking hours rearranging wet knickers and washing yeah. all around this camp you to and do squeezing that, it out Are and hanging kidding? it up for you. I've been biting my tongue, but all the time. You, all, you don't want everything. me to do it. Personally, yeah, I feel yeah. that constantly wringing out people's knickers that aren't even here in other clothes is futile. Them. The group dynamics of these five people is not working. Yeah. It's not productive, and I'm sat here yeah. thinking, I am stuck with this. Where? I'm all but we collected it at night as well, Julie, but, but you just walked be. with us. I know what Where I said. How the fuck do you keep yeah. a fire oh, going, going then? To me, no, do you know what? I'm what not, I'm you're saying right. Is, what I'm saying is, we should collect wood. And I'm so, I'm doing the selfie now because you really need to know how I'm feeling. <laughs> We have no fire. <laughs> we have nothing to drink because we can't boil it to purify it and sterilise it. I don't know where everyone else is. The other group have gone missing and I'm really worried about them. But I'm, I'm just questioning, like, how on earth are we expected to survive in this? On Coconut Beach in the north of the island, the expedition party remain out of water and have decided to stay the night. I think that needs to go higher. Yeah. They're building a makeshift shelter. We've basically spent two days walking for four and a half hours. That's nine hours in total we've spent walking around this bloody island trying to get back to where we started. Uh, everybody's very dehydrated. We've not had actual water uh, for two days. It's just blah, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And then the other side would go like that. Yeah, brilliant. After spotting a storm on the horizon, the women scavenged the beach for containers to collect rainwater, their only hope of rehydrating. Um, I'm going to have to support the bottles and this polystyrene thing so that they're upright and they spill. I may have to keep it behind my stuff so that the tide doesn't wash it out. <laughs> Finding fresh water is so important. That combination of very oppressive 30 degree heat plus the humidity, you know, at over 90% can easily mean the women get through a litre of water an hour. You know, that is a lot. Unless they find water, I reckon the women only have one more day. As night draws in, the women abandoned at camp are attempting to light a new fire to purify their muddy rainwater. All we're doing now is trying to make a hole. Out, it's out. Oh, for fuck's sake. So we thought we'd get a fire going tonight, but it hasn't happened. Well, I think we'll start with the hydrosis by now. I don't know where the other girls have gone from the camp. I don't know where the hell they could be. Or what they're doing for shelter up. Excuse me. What they're doing for um, shelter. All day, Julie's been at me non stop. I've come on this experience to try new things to push my comfort zones. Hello? Guys? Can someone shine their light over here? Because I swear I'm hearing noises. Please, it's like a... It's... Someone moving? It? It's coming close to me, please! It is it's Julie! It's Julie! Oh, fuck my life. Oh, oh, oh shit. On Coconut Beach, the storm is still in the distance and the dehydrated women are pinning all their hopes on their makeshift containers collecting rain. I've never actually wanted water so much in my life. Check this lightning out behind me. Yeah! It's 
so cool. As long as you can actually see the line of lightning, I could feel like a weather girl. And here we have a big fuck off shiny storm. And to the north, we have a storm. Look just there, we've had a bolt of lightning. And I imagine around here, in just a moment, we're going to have a bolt of lightning. And I imagine just about there, we're going to have a bolt of lightning to the right. Because sometimes it jumps from cloud to cloud. In a moment, we're going to have a strong northeasterly bolt of lightning right there. Hang on, we're having a few technical difficulties. Thank you, Bob. 11 p.m. With the storm still a way off, the women bed down for a long night under their makeshift shelter. We're going to spoon on the side. All lights off. Nighty night. Sorry, Bloody hell, have you farted in my face again? Sorry, I did. It's 5.30 a.m. and the storm has finally hit the island. The women are hoping their containers are full of rainwater. We've just had the most uncomfortable sleep of our lives. It's just a nightmare. Just hope we can get from water in as soon. Can I, can I just share something with you, everybody? Bad, really bad news, we have no water because the tide has washed our bottles away. Nothing. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, fuck. I feel like I can cry right now. I seriously think I could cry. I think I need a lot of shit. After almost 48 hours with hardly anything to drink, the women sourced just a handful of coconuts. Oh, my God, this one's gold! Oh. Ah! But with only enough liquid to have a few sips each, one woman is finding it all too much. You all right, Kate? Just struggling. I'm really struggling, guys. Oh, come on. Come on. I'm really, love. really missing my girl. Mm. I've decided to do this because, having been made redundant four times, it left me feeling worthless and a burden on everybody. And I wanted to set myself a challenge and do something that was extremely difficult, but that I had to do, and that I can't, I can't walk away from it. And have more confidence in myself and make my children proud of me and make my husband Chris proud of me. I just feel like I've bitten off more than I can chew. No, not at all. Honest to God, you are doing brilliant. You are doing absolutely brilliant, and they're going to be so proud of you. I know. I just want to speak to Chris. I know. And have him say, keep going. You can't do everything through your kids and your husband. You have to have some me time. But I like doing everything through them. OK, well, that's cool. I think initially when people get marooned, it's all about the physical, the fact that they're tired and they're hungry and they're hurting. But after a while, people become accustomed to that. But then the battle becomes something much more meaningful. Actually, the fact that you're missing your loved ones, and those battles can be much harder. I'm so thirsty. We haven't managed to find any water. I'm so thirsty. Look at that. The good news for the women is that in tropical storm season, the weather can change in an instant. Guys, guys, bring your pots! It's yeah. running like a bloody cat. The return of the rain proves to be their salvation. Yeah, baby. From the most miserable situation to the most joyous situation. Yeah, see? 
we go up, we go down, we go up, we go down, we were right through the floor down, and now we're uh, elated. Rehydrated. Time to dive! And with bottles full of water. And we came down this one. The expedition party set off. Confident they'll finally rescue the others. OK, so we're on the right track. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Oh, Wimboe, oh, Wimboe, oh, Wimboe, oh, Wimboe. It's the women's fifth day on the island, and the two groups have been separated for over two days. Spirits are buoyed with bottles full of rainwater, but the expedition party are going round in circles, trying to return to camp to rescue the women waiting. We want to stay in a straight line. Nobody's disagreeing with you. We will have to make little diversions. No, that way. Mum of two, Kate, remains desperately homesick, missing her family. Just do my dinner. Oh, cos I'm not doing another night in this jungle like this. That will be it for me. And I've made that decision. If we don't you make it back... feel that strongly about it now? Yep. And I know the people who matter to me the most won't care if I come home early, to be Kate, honest. Kate, calm down. We're going the right direction. It might not be... I'm not talking like to a you. Path. I'm talking to George. I know. Fucking attitude and a half. You do. And you can kiss my fucking ass. If these women are going to survive, they've got to learn quickly how to work together as a team. Pulling together is paramount in times of crisis. And the truth is, we always survive better when we cooperate and when we don't fight. Um, there's no need please, no negativity. We'll just need to keep on this positively. I know, you've got a really bad attitude, Kate. I haven't, I'm just fed up. You do, you're speaking to everyone with a really bad tone, so... Can everybody please stop arguing? Because it's yeah. really not helping. Yeah. But maybe we should just, for the next 10 minutes, all of us just say completely yeah. nothing and just concentrate on walking and following yeah. feet. No, that way. Guys, I think we need to go that way. Hold on, hold on, hold on, what? hold on. At camp, the group have spent over two days with no food, drinking just small amounts of rainwater, waiting for the expedition party to return. And damp conditions have brought out the jungle critters. Like right now, uh, all my ass is proper itchy. I've only got a few bites, but above it, my face, my hands. She has, we've just looked at her ass. Oh, yeah, we have just looked at a bomb. The rain last night was ridiculous. Like. And I was just, I'm so ill that I just need to sleep. Like, my throat, I can't swallow. I don't want to do this. I want to show everyone I can do this, but it's really hard. Whenever I have a problem, my parents always sort me out. Right now, my dad pays for everything that I want. My, my boyfriend looks after me, especially on nights out. They see me as their baby that they still need to protect. I don't do anything by myself, and I, I want to be more independent. I want to do something for myself and just be able to be like, yes, I did that. The worst part is I'm starting to think that my parents are right. I shouldn't have done this. Back in the jungle, Forrester's daughter, Fee, has taken over leadership of the trek back to camp but it's only taken half an hour for the mood to disintegrate. We really strongly think we need to go right here. I, I've got to say I do agree. Oh, brilliant. We have been travelling in this direction. No, we haven't. We've been travelling in that direction. No. Yeah. No. Why is it you're so adamant you're right all Just the time? Just hold on. Just, I'm not okay, adamant I'm right. Yes, you are, listen, because listen, you're dismissing listen. everybody out. Listen, I understand. V will not listen. Jeez, I live in the woods, so I always circumnavigate woods. Well done. But we spent the night last night 
in a place that we had just left. You never noticed that, was that we'd my double fault. back on us. That was my never fault. We'd double back. Because she wasn't in charge. It's often when stress levels are high that all the social graces fall away. Uh, and it's also when tempers fray. They've got to learn quickly how to communicate better as a team. At this point, their survival and that of the women at camp depends on it. Just we have to spend another night in this jungle like this. I'm out of here. You need to listen to people. You don't listen to anybody. I do think that you really don't listen to anybody. And this is, is actually... Is this life or death? I'm just so tempted to tell you to take the lead and do it. Because yeah, because then, then if I job, leave, it's it? my own fault because I'd have got us off. I give up. OK, I have the machete. What? Help! Becky! Becky! I'm coming! Call the medics! She's run! Run! Fainted! Radio in medic now! She's absolutely fucking boiling. Oh, God. With Belinda, the only doctor amongst the 13 women lost with the expedition party, the group at camp must radio for a safety response team to intervene. They are on standby on a nearby island in case of emergency. Um, she's boiling. I need to get some air to her. Oh, my God. This is way fucking beyond any fucking joke. Everyone needs off here. I swear to God. It's not a programme. It's fucking ridiculous. Having gone to the rocks for air, after five days with barely any food or water, Fran has taken a serious turn for the worse. The safety response team arrive. I think the problem is with Fran. I, do, I think she's not a moaner. I think she's been far iller than we knew. <laughs> We're going to put her on a stretcher, we're going to take her on our boat, and then we're going to do proper assessment and see what needs to happen from, from there. With the group of camp a member down and the expedition party lost with dwindling water supplies, the women's existence on the island hangs in the balance. Okay, now. <sighs> Now. The 13 women have been split apart for two days. She's collapsed. Oh, my God. And the group at camp are now a member down after Fran collapsed and was evacuated from the island. Another one gone? I knew she was poorlier than we thought. Out at sea, my safety response team are assessing 24-year-old Fran. Uh, it says 72 and 146. I don't care how like dehydrated or faint I am, the rest of us are exactly the same. I shouldn't get any privileged treatment over feeling a bit sick. I'm just really pissed off at myself. I know I can do this. Do I faint 400 times to not last hit me or something? After five days without anywhere near enough water, Fran has succumbed to dehydration. And with the expedition party still nowhere in sight, the other four women are equally at risk. So many people dropping off. I'm just worried there's going to be more and more because people can't stand these conditions. Fran's coming back. Fran's coming back. She really? Fran's body temperature and heart rate have returned to normal. And in Dr. Belinda's absence, the safety response team deem her fit enough to rejoin the others. Is it like heaven seeing us? <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there's things she'd rather see than us. I had to beg them to let me back on the island. I just had to come back though, because like, then it would be only four girls here and I couldn't leave them. I'm so glad I'm back. The expedition party have been walking for two days, trying to find their way back to camp. This is where I feel we should go. This looks like a pretty good path. Having wrestled leadership of the group, homesick mum of two, Kate, is now guiding the women through the jungle. This is going to go well. 
Just keep going. You this way you want to go. The thought of not getting there, stressing me out, you know. We will get there. I'm not confident to take responsibility for this. OK, well, where are we going now? Where are we going now? Just no more confrontational straight. arguing. Just keep walking. It's just that way. Keep going, keep going, keep um, going. Well, I'm losing my confidence now. I don't want to lead. Gonna... I'm sorry, I don't want to lead this group. I don't want to. Yeah, I'll lead it. You tell me where to go. Or, do you know what? Or you lead what you think, and I'm just... No, 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 I... no, I'm not going to say another word, because I'm having a complete crisis of confidence in myself. Yeah, I am so scared. We're all scared, because you were so confident. Yeah, but that's... I know, but... Now it's gone. My confidence is gone. I'm sorry, I should no, just keep my mouth shut. You lead the way, Fee, please. Fuck! After over two days of waiting and now dangerously dehydrated, the women at camp are finally taking their fate into their own hands. They haven't found us, so we've got no alternative but to find them, because we've stayed and we've waited, I don't, I don't even know, two days, three days, to be rescued. If we don't find them, I think we're going to make a raft and go to another island. I, I just never, ever want to see this spot ever in my life again. Until now, Staying put has actually been the surest way of allowing the others to try and find them. But after days with no fire, dwindling water supplies, no food, the women now need to weigh out the dangers of striking out into the unknown against the risk of waiting it out with no more resources. Now we have to just go and blow our whistles madly to see if anyone's hearing us, and that's what we're going to do, that's the plan. Blow, blow, blow. Everybody in this group is good at blowing, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think we're all well, I think we're all seasoned blowers here. Yeah, yeah? girls. <laughs> yeah. Unaware of the expedition party's whereabouts, the five women are searching the coastline. Our journey to find the other team begins now. Whoa! Are you alright, sweetheart? Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Cracking on. Good on ya. Oh, it's so cold. Oh my gosh, my knickers are getting wet. Oh my god, at least our fannies will feel fresher. No. <laughs> Having left Coconut Beach three hours ago, the expedition party are completely lost and their water supply is fast disappearing. After homesick mum of two Kate quit as leader, Georgie recognises where they are. Oh my god. I made these marks. I knew I recognised this place. The women are convinced they are finally about to find camp. Do you remember you, and me, and Abby did a recce? This is where we came to. I, I know. I know. That's what I was just saying. They're just down there. I'm ecstatic just because I got the hell out of Shit Creek. Fuck, that's so fucking deep. That's up to my tits, so that's swimming for Fran. It feels desperate, cos we feel so close right now, no! but... Yeah, we haven't had a response on the signal. Along the coast, the group from camp have entered the mangrove swamps. Oh, we... Oh! OK, OK. I can't I've do that. I've got you. I've got you. You can totally do this. One, two, three. There we go. Oh, With hey. the sweltering midday sun beating down on the dehydrated women, 55-year-old cashier Julie is struggling. Oh, fuck. It's right, hold me. Back so, on's in now. Left and right, left and right. Yeah. That's it. Uh, okay, so feet. No, I need to leave my boots. No, you're gonna need to take those with you. You're gonna need them. So we can do it. We'll just take our time. Uh, We're in no rush. We'll just take our time. Oh, bring it out. Oh, great. Okay, thanks. Another mark. Look, another one. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, this is it. This is good. I recognise this. We're so oh. damn close, though. So close. This does look familiar. We're literally round this corner. Is that a pink potty down there? Yes. So you recognise it? We're at Coconut fucking Beach. No, we're not. 
Yeah, we're at, we're at Coconut we Beach. Are. You're right, we are. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> Come on, let's get down there. I can't fucking deal with this. The women have circled back to Coconut Beach for a second time. Having pushed through the jungle for two days, they're not one step closer to camp. How the fuck is that possible? How is this possible? We kept the sea to our left the whole time. After conquering the mangroves, the group from camp continue north. Guys, it's a beach! Woo! I can't believe we're here. Becky, this is what I've been dreaming of. After five days being trapped in the jungle, they remain determined to find the expedition party. I thought we were so fucking close, like three minutes away. And it's only round the corner, but we can't fucking navigate. We cannot navigate through that. I'm stressed because I thought we were so close. And then I can't walk and I'm just fucked and we're all fucked. <laughs> <laughs> three, three nights without water, fucking trousers like this. I can't do it, no way. I was wanting to see them and see if they were okay. <sighs> How the fuck did that happen? I don't even understand. We cannot walk anywhere on this island without getting lost. <sighs> it's a maze. It's the world's trickiest maze. Should I have a 30 second shade break? No. I need to go and see. <laughs> Another beach, but not as nice as the one we're on. Hang on. Is that a load of clothes hanging in that tree? your situation is you can't wallow in negativity you know survival is about dogged determination learning from your failures and never giving up I cannot believe it we found the group finally back together the women take a moment to savour their island home. Race! We needed them. We've all got different strengths and weaknesses that can help. It's just kind of complete. Keep going. Keep going. By evening, with the reunited group, 13 women strong. Come on. Ooh. It's all hands on deck to light a new fire. It's nice and slow. That's it. But after being lost for two days, island survival has taken its toll on mum of two, Kate. It's just the, 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 the whole end. The blunt end. If I'm really honest with you, I can't see it getting any better. I feel really tired and very, very emotional. I'm just trying to be part of this group. But they're not the people I need to be with. I need to be with my family. And I just need to be at home. The general feeling is, take me home, please.
By morning, furniture maker Kate has made her decision. I'm not going home because I'm dehydrated. I'm not going home because I can't hack it. I'm going home because I want to be at home. You contribute so much, you really do. But it's been difficult for me because I've been missing people so much. That won't get any easier. No, that'll get worse. Oh, my God, it's horrible seeing another one go. I thought she'd hang on in there. We need everybody, and she had good knowledge of bloody building and stuff. Mum was fucking pissed off. I just think it's, it's weak of her to do that. She's giving up too easily. We need each other to boost each other up. But it's the old thing, isn't it? Kids, mums and kids. It's the old pull. Men can do it, but a lot of women can't. After barely a week on the island, a second member of the team has quit. And with power in numbers, the women's ability to survive is diminishing. I'm a bit pissed off. I think it's a great shame, because it was a fantastic experiment to see how 14 women could cope in this situation and two of them have gone already, and I don't think that shows us all in particularly good light. Next time on the island... Sometimes out here can feel like you've been hit by a major disaster. So thin now. All sorts of bones appearing that I haven't seen since I was a bloody teenager. We need to find solid source food or we could be facing meltdown. Every fucker's bitching and moaning that you're doing fuck all when it comes to wood. I'd say we're 95% sure we've got a caiman in our second oh, trap. Fuck. Damn, <laughs> get out of the water, mate. Watch him, watch him. Go now, go now. 